Welcome back for your next day of bubble method review. So our extra practice, depending on how you want to call it. So here we're going to go look to see what we know. We want our sum to be our middle term, negative 27. We want our signs. And this is key. Remember, when it's a plus sign, it tells us they're the same. And this one tells you what it is when it's a plus. So that means they're both going to be negative. Okay, so we have factors of 7, which are 1 and 7. We have 18. Factors of 18. Let's try that again, Jenkins. 1 and 18. 2 and 9. And then we have 3 and 6. And because they're both going to be negative, we can throw our negatives on all of these now. Okay, and then we get to tire them out. So let's get going. So 1 and negative 8. Negative 1 and negative 8. I'd end up with, I'll do my work off to the side. You end up with negative 1 plus negative 56. Negative 57, not going to be my solution. Let's switch off the signs in the middle or the way we're grouping them. That gives me negative 8 plus negative 7. It gives me negative 15. So we know that one's not going to work out. Okay, let me choose a different color here. Not the most creative doing it. So let's try negative 2 and negative 9. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 7 times 9 is going to be negative 63. Negative 65. Connect these. We have 1 times negative 9 is negative 9. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. I wrote 15. Whoopsies. We add those together and you get negative 23. So we see that's not working for us. Let's try one more. Oops, I did it again. I know you missed my singing. Uh, negative 3, negative 6. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 7 times negative 6, they're 542. Negative 42, way too big. Okay, so we're going to try the other option. Okay, so we end up with 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. 7 times 3 is negative 21. Those add together to be negative 27. And we see that's what we're interested in there. That's a good pairing. So when I do this, remember the first pair is going to be our leading coefficient, our leading term in each of these binomials. So 1 and 7. Ooh, these are with Bs. I put Xs. It's not a big deal, but for the sake of us not... Being confused, I'm going to go back. 1B, 7B. So let's see which ones don't look like that. So the first one has a 1B and a 7B. The second one has a 1B and a 7B. The third one, we obviously proved that not true. And the fourth one has a 1B and a 3B. So we know that one's not true. So we're down to A and B as our options. Um, and then we know the ones that are grouped together, the ones that are not going to be in the same parentheses, the ones that have the line drawn. So 1 and negative 6 have to be in separate parentheses. 7 and negative 3 had to be in separate parentheses. And here we go. We see that A is our correct answer. Good luck. Let me know if you have more questions.